All right, welcome you guys. We'll go ahead and get started because it is our Monday night Fit Fam team call. So we're so happy that all of you guys are here. Oh, can everybody hear me? Okay, I'm getting lots of thumbs up. Krista, I don't know why. Is your, is your mic on? Because I'm, okay, I'm going to keep going and assume that everyone can hear me. Um, but yeah, welcome you guys. Thank you all for being here. I am super excited for tonight's call by Brittany Swanson. So I hope you guys have your notebooks out. And we will go ahead and get started with some recognition. Um, well, Carissa was doing recognition. Okay, so. I was going to say, is she the one who, yeah, she can't hear? Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you know? you. I had my headphones plugged in. That'll do it. <laughs> Um, like it's like really like it was like so like quiet and I was like what is going on? Oh. <laughs> I've done that okay. a million. All right, okay, take it away. Yeah, let me just share my screen. <laughs> okay. Okay. So can everybody see? Are we good. Okay. All right. So Carter, please. Um. All right. So we'll start with um our life changers this week. So um, with two, we have Sarah Jennings, Nicole Rodriguez, Molly Wasserman, Michelle North, uh, Lauren Anderson, Lauren Avon, Lauren Kinker, Kyla Pease, Katina Hester, Joanne Sofield, Jessica Gifford, Jennifer Bokowski, uh, Amelia Clausen, Alicia Hendelson, Cody Clark, Carolyn Rosatano, Brittany Long, Brianna Snyder, uh, Amy Constavoy, Ali Marchez, maybe? Christy Keiko, Katie Petrillo, uh, Katie Walver, Jessica Hoyt, Diana Francis, Holly. They have four. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, guys. Okay, so four. <laughs> so four, we have Christy Keiko, Katie Petrillo, Katie Lover, Jessica Hoy, Diana Francis, Holly Swigger, uh, Diana Farman, Brittany Swanson, Alexandria Russell. And then with six, we have uh, Sarah Howley, Salvatore Jones, Rachel Kreider, Kylene Spensley, and Carla Ordonez. And then with eight, we have me. And then with 10, we have Taylor Gross and Chelsea Treichler. And then with 14, we have Emmy Schneider Green, uh, 16, Carolyn Marone, and then with 20, Natalie Balsamo. And then for our top recruiters, with one, we have Sarah Jennings, uh, Salvatore Jones, Nicole Rodriguez, Lauren Kinker, Kyla Pease, Christy Keiko, me, Alicia Hendelson. Diana Farman, Cody Clark, Brittany Long, Amy Consovoy, Alexandria Russell. And then with two, we have Natalie Balsamo, Molly Wasserman, Lauren Avon, Katie Petrillo, Katie Lover, Jessica Hoyt, Diana Francis, Carolyn Rosatano, Brittany Swanson. And then with three, we have Rachel Kreider, Kylene Spensley, Carla Ordonez, Carolyn Marone with six. We have Taylor Gross. And then our top recruiter, Emmy Schneider Green with seven. And then um, our life changer of the week again, Natalie Balsamo. And our total success club points are 184. That's it. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So we still have a long time for those of you who are not at Success Club, which is a lot of people are like right there. Uh, just keep pushing because it's not at all over. You guys can all get there. So next week, I'm sure everybody's going to be in at least Success Club 6 and up. So thank you for doing that. And I can't see other oh, Europe. Okay. So yeah, I think that's everything, right? We can just hand it over to Brittany and get started. We don't have any other announcements or anything. All right, awesome. Well, I hope you guys have your notebooks out. And yeah, Brittany, it's all you. Thank you, Emmy. Hi, guys. How's everyone doing? Give me a head nod or something. Um, I hope everyone caught the eclipse today, um, no matter where you were. It was really cool. 
Shout out to Nicole for um, doing going live on making a pinhole projector. That was awesome because I actually did it and got to see it that way. <laughs> but um, let me share my screen. Okay, now I lost it. Um, can everyone unmute um, themselves? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Share screen now. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. So a little bit about me before we jump into this. Um, before coaching, I was in the full-time corporate world working as an accountant, and I had pretty much resigned to the fact that I was always going to be tied to a desk, and my main goal was just to like work up through the ranks and eventually get to the point where I was making enough money that I was happy and can do whatever I wanted and eventually earn enough vacation so I could spend that money doing the things that mattered to me. But there came a point where I realized it didn't matter how much money that I made I, if I didn't have the time to actually do anything with it. And I was missing out on just quality experiences with family and friends and my boyfriend. And I realized that's not what I wanted my life to be. It didn't make sense to be unhappy the whole time I was at work because when you think about it, how much we can be at those full-time jobs that we may not be as happy at, it's way too much time. And so I'm so thankful that coaching came into my life because it allowed me to get a different picture for my life and realize there was another way. But a year ago, if you would have told me that I would leave that secure accounting job to um, basically be in network marketing, I would have laughed in your face. I didn't want anything to do with network marketing for two reasons, because I didn't want anything to do with sales. And I also didn't want to be that annoying person who was asking people to buy things because we've all been, you know, hit up by someone in a, in a gross way. And I just wasn't sure that there was a way to do that any other way. But after seeing this team and particularly Carolyn, the way that she does things and adds value to people, I realized it's something that I absolutely was passionate about because I had seen what Beachbody did for me in my personal life and I wanted to share that with other people. And, it and in doing so, it allowed me to create the freedom that I so desperately wanted. And with that decision to coach full time, I opened myself up to stepping outside of my comfort zone, but I also opened myself up to the chance of being rejected a lot. <laughs> and, um, I used to think of every rejection as, you know, it kind of hurt personally. And I realized I wasn't going to get very far with that mindset on it. So through doing a lot of personal development and, you know, just listening to podcasts and reading, and then eventually coming across the book that inspired this talk, I'm going to go uh, talk about tonight, a book called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. And it's a book about negotiations, but it really helped me restructure the way I hear no, I don't see it as rejection anymore, which is a good thing because this month particularly, I feel like I've been getting a lot of no's, but it's so important for us to reframe no, because if we don't, we're going to get discouraged. And it's really important that we stay consistent in all of our actions. So we can't let the no's slow us down. So let me make this big. So when everybody, whenever somebody tells you no, it's important to realize that it's not an attack on you or they're not saying no to you or rejecting you as a person. It's a way for them to protect themselves. So really what they're doing 99% of the time, sometimes they may just say no and they have all the information. They're just saying no, but 99% of the time, it's a way of masking an objection that they don't want to talk about, something they may be embarrassed about or something that they just don't want to talk about with you, or it can be just a lack of knowledge. They may not know what you're offering or what you can do for them. And so they just say no to end the conversation and keep themselves safe. It's, it's nothing against you. It's just a way to protect themselves. So do not take it personally. That's, that's like the first piece of advice I have. And once you can distance yourself from their response, things will become a lot easier. So another reason behind people saying no is, again, with the safety aspect, they want to feel powerful and in control. So let them have that. If it takes them saying no for them to feel comfortable and eventually 
warm up to you, let them have it. You know, you can take their no and then you can see how you can transform the conversation. And I'll be going over ways to do that in a little bit. Um, okay. So if they're really trying to mask an objection or some lack of knowledge that they have, what does their no really mean? There can be many things. It could be that they're just not ready to agree. They could be saying, I don't understand. They could be saying, I don't think I can afford it. I think that's one that I particularly come across with a lot of um, people that I talk to. A lot of people are scared to admit that they don't think they can afford it because that can be a very touchy subject. Um, they could be saying, like, I need more information. I don't, I don't know what you have. They may be thinking that they have to talk it over with someone else, maybe a spouse, someone who controls the finances in the household. So their no could have a lot of meanings, and it's your job to kind of get to the bottom of what they're really saying when they say no. So the important thing to do is start reframing no. So when you send an invite and you get that no back, don't think of that as a conversation ender Think of that as the point that your conversation is really starting, because this is where your job begins. This is where you can look to see what information are they missing? What information could you give them that might make the conversation go a little further? What information could make them seriously consider your offer and realize that you do have a lot of value to add to them? So this is really an opportunity for us as coaches to help people. And it can really be used to your advantage because you want people to have as much information as possible, whether they're potential challengers or coaches. You want them to have all the info so that they can be the best challenger or coaches when they do sign up. Because if someone doesn't have all the information and they sign up, that's, you know, it's great. You get success club points, but they may not have realized what was expected of them and what, whatever, what was going to be going on. And then they're not going to get as much value out of it because they didn't understand the commitment. And then, yeah, you got success club points, but you don't have a lifer. You don't have someone who's going to get results. And that just kind of looks, doesn't look bad on you, but that doesn't grow your business in the future. You have a one-time sale. They're not going to return. They're not going to, you know, spread the word about how awesome you were. So it's really important to make sure that everyone has an understanding, whether they're saying no up front or they're saying yes up front. So kind of going hand in hand with this, you don't want to be afraid of getting no but you also kind of want to beware of the word yes, because although there are those unicorn encounters where people say yes instantly and sign up in five minutes, I wish there were more of those, but a lot of the times, or I mean, how many of you can relate where someone says yes and you're like, okay, cool, that's, that's a sure thing, and then maybe a link gets sent out and you, they completely ghost you. You never hear from them. Or they say yes, but then they stop responding to you. And they said yes, why aren't they talking to me? Or they say yes, but you can tell that like they don't have an understanding of what is going on. So you kind of want to keep the conversation going, but you can tell they're not really in it. So there's three types of yeses that you can get. The first one being a counterfeit yes, which is kind of what I just talked about, where they say yes, but it doesn't really mean yes. They want to say no, but they might be trying to avoid confrontation or they may want to say yes, but they don't have enough information to give a full-on committed yes. So they're saying yes just to keep the conversation going to probe for more info, which that's kind of an ideal beginning yes, because at least they want to keep the conversation going, but that, that might not always work out. They might just be saying yes because they don't want to avoid an uncomfortable situation. The, um, the second type of yes is a confirmation yes, where they're saying yes and they might mean well, but they're not actually committed. They are not going to sign up if you were to say, okay, what's your shake flavor and what email address, you know, what do I send it to? They've said yes, but they're not really committed yet. And that's where you kind of have to show the value in the group to get them to that committed yes, where they're going to take action. And then the third yes, the committed yes, is just what it sounds like. They're committed to take action. They're going to be signing up. That's what we all want to get to. And whether you have to get to that committed yes from them saying no up front, or from them giving you either a counterfeit or those kind of like wishy-washy yeses. That's our job to get them to a committed yes to where they're confident in what they're doing. Okay, so how do we get from that no or a fake yes to a commitment? Well, 
it's our job to guide our prospects to discover our goal as their own. And that sounds kind of convoluted, but let me explain more. So our goal is to help people. And for us to do that, we have to get them either into a challenge group or to sign on as a coach with a challenge pack. They need to have the tools to reach their goals and we need to get them into the environment where they're going to reach their goals. So that is our goal, get someone into our group with a challenge pack. But you can't tell that to them. You can't say, sign up in my group. I want you to sign up under me, be in my group. That They're like, okay, that's great for you. What's in it for me? So that's what you have to do. You have to talk to people in terms of what's in it for them so that in the process, you're both, your goals are coming together because you want to help them and they're going to realize that you have so much to offer them that can help them. So when you are presenting the opportunity to them and talking to it about them in terms of what's in it for them, they, you're getting an understanding of their goals so that you can show how what you're doing lines up and it's going to get them closer to where they want to be. And it's really important, I think, in this step to make sure you're not getting to the point where you're trying to convince people of anything. Because I know when you're in these conversations and you're getting, you feel like you're getting so close to them signing up, kind of gets to the point where you're like, okay, I just want to say anything to, to get them in this group because I know there's value there and I know they're going to love it. But you don't want to just start saying anything to get them on board. You don't want to convince them and just be kind of killing them with kindness or anything because those are the people who sign up, like I said earlier, and they don't get as much value out of it because they were convinced. They weren't committed. They didn't take this and internalize that I really want to do this. And that's where people get results. And that's where they get those, those sustainable or sustained changes. So really important in this step to not get into convincing mode and just keep reminding yourself that you're here to educate people and just let them know what you have to offer and how it can help them. So now when you're guiding them to a committed yes, there are certain ways to do this. So say that it started with them saying no. Um, one thing that I like to do um, is ask questions, and that's what we should be doing too, just to make sure the conversation keeps flowing. But say you sent just a general invite to a challenge group, and they responded, which is nice, at least they didn't ignore you, and they just say, no thank you, um, I'm not interested, or no thank you, I already have something that's working for me. I um, One question that I like to just kind of send off when I get that kind of response is, may I ask what the holdback is? Do you have any questions so that you have the information to consider it in the future or something like that? And this has actually worked really well. People um, usually come back and they're actually pretty straightforward, I found at least in my experience. They'll say finances are tight right now or they'll say, well, I'm actually just curious about what the group entails. And I know when I first started coaching, when someone would just respond and say no, I was just thankful that they responded and didn't ignore me. So I would just say, okay, no worries, thanks. I can follow up in the future. And then the conversation ended and I would wait a few weeks and maybe we'd get a step further next time. But by doing this, you're advancing the conversation one step further so that you don't have to wait longer before you can move the conversation along. And sometimes it can end, it can end up really well because you've now opened a conversation and you can give them that information that they want. So some information I could give them... Um, I've actually recently just started uh, sending a video, like showing the beach body on demand or whatever their question is about. Um, just giving them any kind of information that will help them make that, or at least give them the information so that they can make a better decision. So say they said no later in the conversation. You asked, you invited them and they said they were interested to getting more details, but then they said no later. Then I like to ask, what about this doesn't work for you? And these are all questions that I got from this book too. So this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> but I say, what about this doesn't work for you? And it allows them to answer you. And then you can see, well, are they worried about the time commitment? Are they worried about money? Are they worried about having the space to do the workouts? It just allows you to, again, get that information from them. So you can say, oh, okay, I totally understand that concern. I have that concern. Or someone on my team had that concern. A previous challenger had that same concern. But this is what I found and you can explain how you made it work in spite of that. Um, another way of phrasing that is you could say, what would you need to make this work for you? So maybe they're worried that they won't have the motivation or support to do the workouts every day. 
And that's clearly where you come in and say, oh no, girl, like I got you, that's what I do. I'm here to help you stay consistent and reach your goals. So those are just some questions that you can use to elaborate on any objections they may have, or at least keep the conversation going so that you're still progressing with them. Okay, my favorite thing to do that I got from this book is called labeling. And it's basically taking anything that they say to you and either repeating it back to them, or you can go a different route, which I'll mention in a second. But so say someone, you invite them and they say, oh, that sounds really awesome, but I just started a new job and I'm moving and I'm starting school. Believe it or not, I had someone who had all of those things. I was like, wow, your life is crazy. But to me, that all came, up, came down to them basically saying, I don't think I have enough time. So back to them, I would say, okay, it seems like you're worried about the time commitment. And then they'll either come back and confirm that, which in which case you can say, oh, girl, this group is made for busy people just like that, and you objection handle from there. Or they'll come back and say, no, that's actually not it. It's more, I'm worried about finances in that busy time in my life. And then you go from there. The other way to use labeling is kind of in the reverse, where you purposely mislabel their objection. And this one is really powerful because this is where you can really find out what the real deal is. Because sometimes people will throw an objection at you just because they don't want to talk about the real one. So they might try to make it seem like they're really busy. And when you say, okay, so it seems like you're really busy or, or something, you just do the opposite of what they said. And they'll say, no, that's not it. It's actually this. And I was kind of surprised at how easily this one works because I was like, no one's just going to come out and admit what they're really worried about because I'm mislabeled. But it's, for some reason, it's like a weird phenomenon. I don't know. People are really open when you mislabel. It's almost like they want to prove you wrong or something. But I'm like, yeah, you can prove me wrong if we get down to the truth of this. So um, it really just allows you to find out what their true concern is or if they're masking something that is tougher to talk about. Or any, I mean, it could be something just completely that was not on your radar at all. They could be have something completely different going on in life. So it allows you to get to know them more and just really see how you can help them in your group. Okay, so the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this call is to not let the words yes or no send you in a frenzy either way. Not in the negative sense and not in the like, oh my God, I'm so excited. It's great to celebrate your wins, but don't prematurely celebrate one of those counterfeit yeses or the non-committal yes until you've gotten them to a point where you're confident that they understand what they're going to be getting and how you're going to help them and they're committed to reaching their goals. That's when you should get excited. And then on the flip side, with no, you don't want to get a no and then instantly think, oh my God, I suck. I can't offer value. They don't want to have anything to do with me. It's not about you. It's because they have some objections or a lack of knowledge that you can help fill in the gaps so that they can make an informed decision for themselves. They still might end up at no, but at least you gave them the information so that they can consider it for the future or you both can kind of rest easy knowing that maybe it wasn't a good fit for them. Um, check my notes, make sure I'm not speeding past anything. Um, so yeah, again, it's your job to get them to that committed yes through providing information, not convincing, but educating. And once you get your head around the fact that hearing no is not bad, you'll be able to keep pushing past the tough times because we're all going to have those days where you've just heard no too many times or just a rough day. And take it from me, like I've seen continuous growth in my success club points every month since I started actively coaching, except this month. And I'm at my lowest success club tally ever. And I've heard more no's in these three weeks, I'm convinced, than I have in the past six months. And I really don't think that's like an exaggeration. I don't know what it is. Carolyn said that Mercury's in retrograde. That must be it. But the cool thing is, um, I'm not letting it deter me and I'm not letting it stop me from taking those daily actions because I know that it doesn't mean I'm a bad coach or that I don't have value to offer. It's, it's just an opportunity for me to get better at talking to people and to give people more information. So I'm hoping that all the people that have said no this month 
we've kept the conversations going so they have more information and it's something they can consider in the future, which that's how a lot of my conversations have been ending. So it's all about just moving forward and iterating because if you know that no isn't a rejection, then you're going to realize it's an opportunity just to get better at what you do and show people what you really have to offer them. So that's it. That's all I have for you guys. If anyone has any questions, and I'll check the chat. I did not check that at all during. Does anybody have any questions? Could you repeat the name of that book and who it was by? Yes, let me grab it. It's called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. V-O-S-S -S is his last name. And he... Um, is an FBI hostage negotiator. So he like knows his stuff in the extreme sense, but in the book, he kind of illustrates all his lessons with the hostage situations, but then he relates it back down to like business or even in like personal relationships. So it was just like an all around awesome read. That's cool. Yeah. Did you see my question? Yeah, did you mention the have you given up? Oh, no, I haven't, but I can, I can talk about that. Um, something that's been working for me, if someone does ghost you or they're just like not being responsive, I, instead of sending like the multiple follow-ups that you, know, you may be doing now, I've started asking this question, which I got from this book too. It's just a really simple question. You just say, hey girl, have you given up on the idea of joining my group and working towards your goals because no one is going to want to say, yeah, I've given up on my goals. That's like, would be really like sad to the ego. So it's really, and it, it gets people wanting to say like, no, I haven't given up. Like people don't want to say they've given up or that they've failed. So that really helps. It's something I picked up from the book too. So give that a shot if someone isn't responding to you. Anything else, guys? I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm like trying to look for you. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, do you think when? Uh, sorry, I hope this doesn't come off the wrong way. But whenever you started implementing the things that you're talking about, did you start? Do you think that that has some other reason why you maybe had some nose this week, this month, or is that? totally separate from no I actually I read this book about two months ago and I made a note that like I wanted to share it with my team but then I was on vacations and then that's when we switched to like the group team call structure where you could sign up and I was like oh that's perfect opportunity I'll talk to it about then so yeah that is kind of um those are unrelated I hope okay two months ago I was doing a lot better gotcha <laughs> yeah I think that was really good. I like never thought of like the taking no for like a no, don't take no for like a no type of thing. Cause like mm -hmm. even right before we started this call, like I feel like I accept no from people that I don't like know as well. Like not people that are like in my network really. Um, so right before this call I had invited someone and she said, no, I'm good. Thanks. And I just said, okay, well maybe I'll reach out later. Like I didn't go, go into anything. So I feel like now like, <laughs> I wish I would have responded yet, but now, <laughs> like moving forward, I feel like, I mean, I wrote down a lot of stuff that I can like take the no and make an opportunity. So that was good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it's definitely, it helps at least with getting like conversations one step further so that maybe you can knock off like a month of them saying yes. Like Emmy posted in the team page the other day, how long it takes to get people to yes. Sometimes if you can just like get a, one question further, each conversation, you can increase your like conversion rate. I was actually just going to bring that up. I was going to ask if I could just like touch on that really quick just to reassure yeah. people because I know I'm hearing more no's than usual this month too. So this is something if you're on my team, you probably already saw it. I posted it in all the team pages, but I went through every single person who's in my challenge group that just started today actually. And this was a week ago, so I had 15 ladies in there and I went back and I scrolled all the way to the beginning of the very first time I ever invited them see how long it took from the first no I heard till them actually signing up. And I have a very slow turnaround rate, so you guys are probably quicker. People that I talk to, it takes them a while to say yes. But just to like 
drill home the point that you're gonna hear no and you can't quit because if I'd quit none of these people would be in the group so just really quickly 15 people the first one I invited last May second one I invited in July second one I invited or third last December fourth person I invited over a year ago um, there's several that were over a year and a half ago because <laughs> I've been a coach for a while basically I won't read all 15 but there was only one person out of 15 that I had invited and who said yes in August. Every single other person I either invited last month, the month before, all the way back to an entire year and a half ago. So I hope that's just a little reality check, like not to be discouraging, but you have to keep asking every single one of those people. I asked every single month, like, hey, I know it wasn't the time last month. Hey, I know it wasn't the time last month. Just me again, checking back in and like not in an annoying way, but every single one of those people, they did say yes this month. Or some of them even had said yes a long time ago, never signed up, eventually bit the bullet and did it this month. So that was 15 people, one person immediately said yes. <laughs> so hopefully that's helpful and not discouraging. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really awesome. I actually, I'm glad you posted that the other day because I was getting to that point where in my follow-ups, I was like, I've asked that girl four times. Do I really want to again? And you posted it right then. I was like, okay, I'm going to ask again. <laughs> Yeah, some of these people were like 15 times, 16 times. <laughs> now, are those people like people that um, you have conversations with and um, like, do they come out and flat out say no? Like I have people who like, I, I invite them and they're immediately like, no, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. and, like, so like, are those those kinds of people or are, is it like more like, oh, what's it about? And you tell them about it. And then later on, they are like, oh, I don't know, maybe later. Both. It's a combination. Some of them were flat out notes. I mean, I could go back and like every single one, I'm sure take notes on type of no they were, but a lot of them I know were just flat out no's. Mm -hmm. um, there's somebody on this call, she knows who she is. She told me no every single month like clockwork for over a year. <laughs> and now she's killing it in on this call. I won't call her out, but she knows. Um, a lot of them though, I mean, the majority of those people were probably people that I invited conversation just dragged on forever they ghosted me they never said yes they were always like not this month um so it's a combination i have all across the board of flat out no right away okay. or flat out yes right away and then they just fell off the face of the earth and so mm -hmm. every single month i would just check back in and be like hey i hope i'm not being annoying but i just wanted to let you know i hadn't forgotten about you um and that's what does it to me is like ever since i started saying that I don't feel annoying anymore and people tell me all the time they're like thank you so much for your persistence it's still not the right time but it means the world that you haven't forgotten about me keep me on your radar um so just that like slight word change i think helps a lot too yeah okay. anybody else? have any other questions Yeah, it's Brittany. <laughs> she called herself out. When you're inviting people, are you asking them? Taylor, that would mean, I mean, these people were all in my challenge group, and it's a mix of coaches and challengers, so this was both. These are people that I both invited to coaching or the challenge group, so probably 50-50 split. Is that what you meant? I don't know where you are on here. Um, well, kind of, because, like, since I'm, like, new to this, <laughs> I never really – I've never actually reached out to anyone yet, like, only because I just – I truly, like, don't really know what to say. Like, I've only had girls really reach out to me, but I'm, like, worried, like, once I stop having girls reach out to me, like, I don't know what to do. And, like, I so far right now I have five or six girls – that are only in it just because they want to be a discount coach, but I don't know how to get them to want it. Like, I don't know how to ever introduce the business side of it without instantly them being like, no, Hey, I did start it. I am. I'm like halfway through. I just saw that. Well, first of all, don't assume anyone's going to say no. Cause Carolyn just cold reached out to me. I'm pretty sure she did to you too. And we both said yes. Um, so exactly whatever was done to you, I would say turn around and that's what you want to say. But I mean, I just ask the people on this list that are coaches. The way I do it is hasn't ever changed. I literally just talk to them, chit chat. Um, I don't have any hard or fast rule about how long that is, but as soon as I feel like I have any kind of connection with them 
and if I genuinely want them on the team, like I don't just ask just anybody. Um, but if it's somebody that I see that they're already into health and fitness or they're just a positive person and I just feel like we'd be friends in real life, all I say is like, hey, I know this is going to seem totally random because we were chatting about your dog or something else, but I just really like your energy. I feel like you would fit right in and you may have seen that I work with this awesome team of women and I really like your vibe. So have you ever considered being a coach? That's all you have to say. I mean, that's even more long-winded. All you have to say is just, I think you'd be an awesome coach. Have you ever considered doing what I do? I had to ask. Also, are these coaches, can you hear me? Because my, I have my headphones in. Yeah. Are they actual coaches? Like you said, they're in there for the discount. They're just not business yeah. coaches yet. Are they in your team pages? Yeah. Because I was a discount coach for a hot five seconds. And I know Carolyn was a discount coach. So, I mean, once they start seeing all of the success of your team and, you know, how tight knit the family is and whatnot, you never discount a discount coach. That's a common saying because you never know who's going to turn into what a lot of coaches that are very successful in this business started out just because they wanted the discount and then they saw the business opportunities so make sure that you include them in everything without throwing like coaching down their throat but just them being able to see the team and inviting them with the team to the team calls even if they don't want to be on them yet they might jump on for and you, you might see their face one day and be very surprised that they're on it Cool. Yeah, that was very helpful. Thanks, girl. Okay, any other questions at all about anything? Okay. So that's some time. No. All right. Do we have any other announcements or anything to go over? Carolyn, Lauren, Chrissy? Um, I don't think so other than uh, we've, I mean, Team Cup, obviously, we're within, we're in that right now. And then the UK group, if you wanted to talk about that, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, while we're all on here, I think a lot of you may have seen, it's in the Swear Your Heart Out team page. Um, and we have this no, this new UK group going. So it's live. It's something you can be adding your UK prospects to. So what it is, is it's essentially just an info group. It's free. If you're talking to people through Instagram or Facebook who are from the UK and at all interested, I would suggest you go ahead and pop them into that. Um, we posted like an entire file in the team page with instructions on basically like how to strategically approach the whole UK launch. And we're going to have several groups going. So go on the team page. Um, if it's, it's pretty recent, but if you just search UK, it should pull up. And it's just a one-page thing that wraps up all the groups we're going to have. We're basically going to have this info group, though, which is something that you would add your potential coaches to now. We have a couple photo albums in there. If you guys can add to the Meet the Coaches photo album with a little picture of yourself and a little bio so that these UK people can kind of get to know us. And then that group, we're just going to treat like we'll add info as it comes to us. So as we hear anything about the launch, as new information comes our way, we're going to just be updating that group so that they're on top of things. So that's something you guys can go ahead and be adding to. You definitely want to go ahead and start actively building relationships and inviting people in the UK since the launch is coming up really soon. Um, we'll also have a UK challenge group, which will just be a 21 day fix group. And this is going to be so that people in the UK, if they've never tried out anything Beachbody, but maybe they're interested in coaching or just becoming a challenger, um, they can try out the program. So we've got all the details in that document as far as dates and launches and when to, when to invite and when to add people to what. So I forget off the top of my head exactly if somebody wants to shout out the date who's better with dates than I am but we will have those two different groups so the coach info group is up now challenge group won't be starting until it's like it was supposed to start the prep week today was it really? to next Monday officially okay I didn't really do it yeah we can start it okay. yeah I didn't have anyone for it either so well we might bump dates back a little bit yeah. then okay well, anyway, stay tuned for that. We will have a challenge group going, which is just going to be 21 Day Fix. Um, they won't get the full challenge pack, and it won't be like a normal U.S. purchase. They'll just get the program. They'll try it out. And then at the end of that group, we'll have two rounds of it so that they can also invite their friends. Um, 
And then at the end of it, we'll do like the few days leading up to the actual official launch in October, right? October 19th. We confirm. Yeah, I think. 19, anyway, 20, something like that. Yeah, I think it's the 19th is the official launch when everything goes live. So the last few days of um, leading up to the 19th, we'll have kind of like a sneak peek format where we'll all be coming in live, hyping it up, building the excitement, and then on the 19th, ideally, we'll have lots of people signing up. So just search for that UK document in the team page if you haven't already seen it. Mark it. Basically, though, just start talking to people now. And yeah, like Carolyn or Lauren said, like searching um, on Instagram by hashtag. Start doing your re like your research to find good UK hashtags groups. Talking to people that you turned down in the past because um, they couldn't sign up. So yeah, just be aware that that is on the horizon. All right. I think unless anybody else has anything, we good. All right. Okay. Well, thank you guys all so much for being here. Brittany, that was awesome. I know I took tons of notes. I think everyone got a ton of value out of that. So we will have the recording up in all the team pages very soon. And thank you guys all for being here. We'll let you get back to your Monday nights. All right. Bye guys. Bye.